200 is presented by Moon Guide. Plan your best hunt. This week we've got a really special treat for you. This is the 40th anniversary for Lone Wolf Tree Stands, which is now Lone Wolf Custom Gear. And Andre DeQuisto, the owner and the inventor of Lone Wolf Tree Stands, has been a great friend of mine for 25 to 30 years now. And I can't thank him enough for being a strong supporter of not just Team 200, but the Moon Guide as well. I'm Andre DeQuisto, and I am the Lone Wolf. The hunt is on. Most of you guys probably know me from Lone Wolf Portable Tree Stands. I've been hunting whitetail and building stands and innovating in this industry for over 40 years now. Uh, it's been my passion. This started out as a hobby. Never got in it to make any money or uh, do great things. And I just took off head over heels of whitetail hunting and uh, basically never, never looked back. I got into whitetail hunting, I flipped over it. Uh, I was hunting from the ground, then I went into trees, and some older guys that I had met showed me that there was these portable tree stands out there and that what they hunted out of. So one guy brought one over one day, uh, it was an actual baker, and put it on a telephone pole and said, this is what a lot of guys are hunting out of. I stood up in it and I was like, it felt like this thing was ready to bust loose at any second. Um, there's no way I was going up a tree in that product. So. I literally started building my own stands as a hobby and producing them because nothing out there worked. Went in the garage and made my own uh, simple version um, of that type of stand. And then I would hunt all year. I had no other hobbies. And I would take the stand that I had out in the woods that I hunt with and I would make improvements on it. Um, working on a lot of aspects that I had troubles through a whole season because I hunt four month seasons, I hunt every day. Now this hobby turned into a beast where guys kept seeing what I was doing, knocking on the doors, wanted me to build them one. Pretty soon the next year I got to build 25, turned into 50. Um, and if I looked at what I was building back then and thought I could actually make a living on it, I had to been crazy. I had the best wood and aluminum stand on the market. And right when I came out with it, the whole industry switched to solid metals and aluminums. So I went back, thought about it, and that's when I came up with the first casting. I did some prototypes, welded the joints together, uh, epoxied silicone, they all constantly made noise. And that was the biggest thing I could never get out of even the wood. I get onto some huge deer, I'd hunt them down, I'd get my crack in them, and I'd go to make a move and they would creak, and I wouldn't get the deer. So I was hell bent on getting noise out of stands. And when we came up with that casting and the first casting that I actually hunted with, unbelievable. I, I knew I had something there. Uh, and it literally got to the point now, I hunt and I don't ever worry about a creek or any noise coming on my equipment. I started closing the deal on more and bigger deer. And the more uh, stealthy I got with my equipment, the more success I seen. Uh, and then that ended up, um, branching off into this mobile part of it. Very impatient guy, don't hunt all day, a lot of hours. I started taking that equipment and literally going full mobile on it. And man, my, my numbers and, and uh, opportunities just went through the roof. Um, I don't know if you remember back, but years ago, somebody wrote an article on me and they called me a, a whitetail hunting machine. It wasn't me they were talking about, it was me with that equipment as uh, you know, one lone soldier out there and it just made things so much easier. Man, I hope I got that one. It's number two, baby. Lock it low. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> the mistake of pissing me off and coming back through here again. Nice buck. But he's down for the count. Ten, he's got a couple deductions. Nice long, 12 inches. Maybe in 13. So I basically went against the whole narrative and the grain of what was going on. Tree stand manufacturers were literally in a race to the bottom, making their products cheaper and less expensive. I was sitting there at a show trying to sell guys tree stands that were three times the cost of what they could buy at a Cabela's store. 
And how do I explain to them that there are three times the benefits in this dam? Even with my hunting, man, they were telling me I had to go high. They were telling me I had to stay out of these sanctuaries and bedding areas. When I looked at magazines, I didn't read any articles. I didn't listen to what anybody else was doing. I basically started hunting on my own and learned. And I found a lot of that stuff going against the grain. I was, my numbers again, um, and opportunities just increasing. There's companies out there that literally I run. Every guy in it is a non-hunter. But you look at their product line, everything they got is all the stuff I designed to a T. They just copy it and, and put it into place and they're out, to, they're out to make money. So we'll keep innovating. And as we go down the road, uh, other companies will follow. Okay, the chase has ended. We finally got them. Uh, this buck we nicknamed the Flyer Buck. Obviously, uh, we had a shed last year of them. And the drop tines and stuff were up off the G2. Uh, my son found a shed late season last year, and we uh, set our sights on this uh, deer for this year. This deer is going to have a special place on my wall. I get to where there's whitetail, where they're at at the time, and that's where I develop the technique of it's called bumping and dumping. If I'm not bumping them, and especially in October, I ain't close enough to dump them. So I'm going to go push the envelope, I'm going to find where these deer are at, and I'm going to be in the draw where they're at and where the action's happening. I've been on the outside looking in for too many years to not follow what I've learned. You've got to get out. You got to hoof it. You got to scout. You got to find where these deer are. These deer do not disappear. You can see a majority of the bucks in this area, this property, are all sitting in this one little bedding area. Uh, it's a small bedding area, but it's surrounded by um, all the trees that are giving up the acorns now. Talk about mobile is I will go in a scout with a stand on my back, read the sign, get on the very best sign I can find, the hottest sign, and I will hunt that spot. I will actually leave my gear in, so I hunt that in the evening, I see what happens on that evening post, and I leave it in and I get in a morning post. Trying to get into these bedding areas, they're bumping them out in the dark because they were they were spending most of the time in there. So we just let that moon phase kind of few days go by, and now that it's uh, when is in a better phase, we uh, decided to dive in, and looks like we got the job done. Jesus, they're all big fans of the moon guide. I've been using the moon for years. Um, I hear these posts about these. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. I don't know where these guys are hunting, what they're doing, and there was just a study a guy came out with on a page. And he was on there saying, well, here, this debunks all that. And then in, in that same breath, he says, well, there was showing some sign of movement according to the moon, but it wasn't all that big dimension. I'm like, what? I just get violent when I like this. When I'm hunting October and I'm hunting a huge buck, a frickin' 20 yard movement of a whitetail is the difference between putting it on a wall and not. And for him to go out there and rant about with all the other eggheads that do these researches and stuff, I've been watching whitetail for 40 years from a tree stand, and if you think it ain't happening, you're freaking lost. 100%. Take that with some freaking good weather pattern coming in, um, some good moon phases, and you're, man, everything's gold. It's, it's the day you want to be there, and if you miss that day, you miss the boat. The guys are out chasing around some world-class deer. Adam's on one that could be close to world record caliber. Uh, I got another big non-typical that we're going to go after after this one. Um, and I think I might be misjudging him. He's a like a seven by eight or eight by nine. Uh, but you gotta start somewhere. Here at Raw Frozen Scents, it's all about providing you with fresh, pure, undiluted deer urine that's just plain effective. Raw scents are collected fresh, then immediately frozen and shipped from the farm directly to your door in an insulated container. The natural product that smells like real deer, increasing your odds for success. And they are going nuts because that smell is in the air. Raw Frozen Scents were 53.2 times more effective when tested against the competition. It doesn't get any better or fresher than Raw Frozen Scents. You know, a lot of guys that I talk to think I'm uh, crazy. I'll dive into a big buck's bedding area, bust them out of there. Um, I think the conception is that um, 
these deer get bumped, they disappear and they don't come back. You knock them out of that bed and now here you are right in this big deer's bedroom and you can have your way with it. He's gone, you can go do all the trimming you want, set up your stand right away, get crazy with it. When that deer comes back, um, there's gonna be a lot of things changed, but it's chances are it's gonna be too late. You'll be there waiting for him. Tip of the day today. If I'd have been to my tree stand on time, I'd be done today. Some of these ones that have three or four different bedding areas, now they'll be in there according to the wind, and they'll be in there consistent in that area, but something will bump them and they'll go settle into another one. Those are tough deer to kill. I like a homebody. He's got his core area. He's somewhere in there on that rim bedding. That's a deer you can kill a lot easier than trying to guess where the hell he's at. You gotta know, here's a good quote for you I've said before. They always say, well, how do you know how far you can take it? You'll never know how far you can take it until you take it too far. And I constantly, to this day, take it too far. And now, with all those years of experience, I can start seeing what's developing. I can see this red hot sign, and I know when to just kind of back out and put my setup up. That's the second buck I bumped off this ridge. There's gotta be a dawn heat in here. And there's a big boy running. More conservative guy would just set a stand up here and get ready. But I'm diving in deeper. I'm gonna find out where the big boy's at. The biggest thing I think everybody does, even serious and non-serious hunters, is the fear of failure. I had it. They're worried to hell that they're going to scare this deer out and they ain't going to come back. They got it in their hind. I got guys that call me, text me, man, I just can't do it. I'm just afraid if I, I know where he's at, if I go in there, I'm going to blow it. You have to be able to go for broke. You're never going to get a hit unless you take a swing. Look at my hands, I can't, I can't stop shaking. Not. You're just looking at the guy who just pounded the new state record, brother. Yes! But coming up on a freaking cage like that, it's got the old ticker pumping. Look at the tine length on that and mass. This buck put a lot of, a lot of mass on. The tines didn't get much longer from the sheds, but it put a lot of mass on. The brow tines got a little longer. The G2s and 3s got a little longer. The one nice thing is that these G5s, they got some inch on them now, so we'll get some score on that. Not uh, particularly wide, uh, but good main beam length. I'm hoping we're going to sneak 27 inches out of there. Um, but the thing is, just, just built the score. Just a bruiser of an animal, too. You want to put numbers in your favor. The amount of time you spend in the woods, how good of a bow hunter you are, the property you're on, time, the weather pattern, all of those things is put numbers in your favor to harvest a, a deer. If you can't, if you work for a living, I don't want to plan around something that, um, you know, weather, moon phase, that's going to put you in, uh, put more numbers into your, in a, your favor of harvesting something. For nearly three decades, the Moon Guide has been the number one tool for helping hunters predict daylight activity for big whitetails. If you're ready to experience results like this, download the Moon Guide app now that includes mapping, landowner data, and the deadly Red Moon Calendar. Stack the deck in your favor and download the Moon Guide app today. Hunt smarter, not harder. Three giant whitetails, including my fifth 200 inch deer, all last year on the Red Moon. Plan your best hunts with Moon Guide. This time around, we just started Lone Wolf Custom Gear. We came on the market again with a stand that now again was three times the cost of anybody else. And we can't build enough of them. We can't build them fast enough because these guys have learned now there's a lot of serious hunters out there. When years, there, years ago there weren't, they understand that good equipment is an advantage. Cody drove me to make a stand that is like five and a half pounds. Really small, and I thought it'd be almost too small for the market. Uh, but I listened to him and then it, um, 
Uh, me being a little older and him being like I was years ago, he wants that lean and mean, and we came out with that model stand, and that actually is our most popular and uh, stand on our market right now. It was just voted a year ago as the best hang on in, uh, in the country from Outdoor Life on an article. And if you ask guys on it, man, they, go, they take that little hang on in and they are, they are well oiled machines. That nine pointers run with that uh, not typical from on the edge of a thicket that runs along the open hardwoods here. So I was asked what my uh, dream day in the woods would be if it would be my last day, what would the scenario be that I would like? I would probably like it to be in the third week of October to almost November 1. I'd like to be on an uh, active licking branch that a huge buck that I'm after I know has been on and been using. I'd want probably the earlier week to be a low pressure system where it shut everything down for a little bit. 10 degrees above average for just temperature as far as colder than normal. And I'd want a high pressure system to hit. I'd want the uh, moon phase to be like three quarter and an evening set. And I think I could seal the deal before dark on that scenario. Just smoke that non typical baby. Boom! Point five all the way. Third week of October, my favorite time to be hunting scrapes. This buck was working scrapes day in and day out. Uh, midday had pictures of him. Uh, all through the night was really aggressive on uh, marking his territory. Actually, wasn't the greatest shot. It was a little far back. Might have nicked some lungs and then out the. Uh, liver and through the guts, but this is a double main beam buck that was running around. Uh, genetics been in the property here for uh, quite a few years. What's all about? Yeah, that is what it's all about. And I've messed up many a time um, and I'm sure there'll be more, but uh, this is what will drive my, uh, drive me now till this, this next season. I, I've learned the haunts of this deer now, and I can actually um, have that intel in my head for coming into this next season. The only problem I have is I got the uh, Stone Cold Killer, my oldest son that hunts the same property, so <laughs> Uno. who knows what will happen. Stay away from this one. This is my 40th. I'm hoping to pass the torch off to my oldest son, who has the same passion I have. Uh, and a lot of guys don't know that uh, in the last 10 years or so, um, that's the reason we've come back. Um, a lot of the ideas in the last 10 years too, I've been working with my son and some of those ideas are also his and I think he's ready to start designing on his own and, uh, and heading up this company.